All right. Thank you very much, Antonio. Um, so, in this work, we try to focus on the relationship between natural resource dependence and tax revenue outcomes in resource-rich countries, right? And we try to ask the question about what kinds of institutions matter. Now, when you see this map here, one thing stands out. It's the fact that the face of developing countries is really one of commodity dependence, all right? So you can see that for many of the developing countries in Sub-Saharan Sub Africa, in South America, and so on, we see that the share of commodity exports as a percentage of total merchandise exports is in excess of 60%, right? If you take a country like Angola or Azerbaijan, just full exports alone exceeds 90% of total commodity exports. Like Antonio rightly introduced, should we be concerned about that in the face of the discussion of the natural resource cares, right? So this is an ongoing debate, and one can read at least three streams of the literature, okay? One that suggests that natural resource dependence or availability does not help in terms of development outcomes, okay? And a variety of outcomes can be looked at. There's another strand that suggests a positive effect, that natural resource constitutes some natural capital, it constitutes an endowment that can be translated to improving outcomes. And then there's a third strand that suggests that, well, the impact of natural resource dependence on development outcomes is conditional on a set of factors. And I think that our work is situated within this, this, this third stream. Now, if you look at the figure here, we look at the relationship between natural resource rent as a nat natural resource rent as a share of GDP and total non-resource taxation. So this is taxation outside the natural resource se sector as a share of GDP. The scatter plot suggests a negative relationship, right? And indeed, there is this whole st um, strand of the resource cares literature that looks at the new fiscal resource cares, right? And the argument is that, well, natural resource dependence could undermine the ability of countries to mobilize taxes from a broad base, right? And there are streams of work that uh, a number of, of, of studies that, that look at that. Well. If this evidence is the case, then there are two challenges, right? If natural resource dependence actually undermines tax capacity or fiscal capacity, the first is that, well, if these natural resources are non-renewable, there's a problem because non-renewable resources have a time horizon, right? And if they, they, are, they are no longer available, then domestic revenue mobilization can be challenged. The second has to do with the fact that if natural resource dependence actually undermines uh, taxation, there's a governance issue, and there's a long-held established literature about the role of taxation in building state capacity, okay, in, in improving governance and sustainable development. Now, what we try to do then is also to reflect on the new institutional literature that suggests that, well, the quality of institutions can play a role in shaping economies. So North suggests that institutions are the rule of the game. Institutions actually uh, shape incentives. They constrain behavior. So uh, if you look at the work of uh, Asemo Group, for instance, this famous 2001 paper suggests that you know, quality institutions you know, can deliver long-term development. In that respect, we try to uh, ask ourselves whether the quality of institutions in a country mitigates the adverse effect of natural resource dependence on tax revenue mobilization. And then we try to find out what types of institutions uh, matter, right? Because there are different types of institutions. One can reflect on political institutions, economic institutions, and so on and so forth. And I'll give you examples of a few uh, shortly. So in a sense, we try to contribute to an, a number of strands to the literature, that is the literature on building fiscal capacity um, you know, across uh, resource-rich countries. We also try to look at the discussion on the relationship between natural resource dependence and building tax capacity, okay, and whether 
they actually this is a complementary relationship or there's actually a, a, a substituted a relationship but more importantly i think that our work is situated squarely in trying to understand the role of quality of institutions in improving tax revenue outcomes which uh, many people in this room uh, uh, have contributed to roberto uh, antonio amongst others now I will engage in a brief uh, theoretical discussion. In terms of approach, we try to look at uh, use panel data. Okay, so we use panel data regression methods. And I'll not go much into this. Maybe during the discussion, we can go into the details. And then we try to draw from 12 measures of institutional quality, you know, some of which have been commonly used in the literature. Okay, so data is for about 100 countries for a period from 1980 to 2015. Now, again, if you take uh, the figures we have here, at least figure two and three, we see that Botswana collects fairly, a fairly reasonable level of resource revenues, right? But if you also look at non-resource tax as a percentage of GDP, they do not do badly. Okay, so you see that. We see, is that working well? Okay, let me just, we see that the, it's, it's, it's fairly been increasing over the period, okay? Not, not that bad. But let's look at another country, Nigeria. We see the trends quite high, although it's been fluctuating, but in terms of non-resource taxation, it's virtually flat, if not decreasing over time, right? Now, what accounts for the different parts, you know, for, for these different countries? There could be different factors, but as I said, we try to look at the role of the quality of institutions, okay? And, and why is that important? Well, states, uh, according to the uh, public trust doctrine, mobilize and hold resources in trust for the citizens. In that sense, they have that power, they will the authority in terms of de determining the fiscal regime in place, determining how to mobilize revenues, but also even how to distribute rents. Now, this power to exploit or this power to distribute rent can, however, be constrained by other branches or other state institutions, either the legislature or the judiciary, depending on the strength of these other state institutions. Now, if there is adequate or effective constraints on the government or on the executive branch, one can expect that some of the concerns that was ra raised in today's keynote, uh, today's keynote address by Hanan Mossi about you know, excessive tax exemptions, you know, uh, tax expenditure, that actually constrained the ability of countries to mobilize enough tax revenue can be checked in a reasonable manner, right? Because government, the executive branch, cannot just you know, um, grant these uh, tax incentives without a formula, you know, without a policy. One can also look at the role of democracies versus autocracies. The situation in an autocratic uh, state or in an autocratic government can be quite different from what we can find in a democratic state. And, and an example that comes to mind is Saudi Arabia's experience in the 1970s. So in the 1970s, when there was a spike in oil prices, there were billions of dollars streaming into the country. And within a year, the government decided to shut down a department for mobilizing tax revenues, giving the inflows in, 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 uh, in, uh, in the um, oil dollars, right? But in a in the democracy, one would expect that this would be less so if there are checks and balances in the system. Okay? So we try to look at this, uh, th the role of, um, of, of these, these political institutions. But of course, the other types of institutions, in a country where there is um, adequate protection of property rights, or whether the social institutions engender you know, a trust, one can expect that that would be an incentive to create incentives for investment, which by and large can widen the tax base. So for even the existing tax rate, an increase in production or investment can generate more revenues, right? So the quality of economic institutions and other types of institutions could be, could be important here. And that's why we explore a number of institutions, so 12 different types of uh, institutions, to try to understand 
whether they mitigate the adverse effect of natural resource dependence on the ability of countries to mobilize non-resource taxes, right? So these are just some examples. Um, because of uh, time, I may not have to go through um, each of them. But what are the what 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 is the summary of of what we find? First of all, we find um, evidence of a conditional uh, hypothesis, uh, resource scarce hypothesis, hypothesis, right? In the sense that we see that the quality of institutions can mitigate or moderate the adverse effect of natural resource dependence on non-resource tax revenues. And here we see a significant case for political institutions relative to the other types of institutions that we explore. Okay. But in addition to that, our results suggest that um, while political institutions are important, other factors are also uh, can, can play a com complementary role. Right? And uh, we will look at this shortly. So let me just take you through um, one of the many figures that we have in tables, but I'll just focus on them, um, uh, two of them, and, and then we can move on. So these figures basically predict the effect of natural resource dependence on non-resource taxes at different levels of institutional quality, right? So we have four different types of institutions. And if you go through, we see that the adverse effect of natural resource dependence is constrained by, you know, the, for instance, the constraint. If you look at figure two, we see that as the quality of institutions improve, as the constraint on executive power increases or is higher, we see that it mitigates the adverse effect of no, and, and nat and natural resource dependence on non-resource tax uh, revenues. And we see the case for, for the, the, the democracy variable as well. But not so much for other types of, of institutions, right? Um, so for instance, property rights, um, we don't see a very strong, um, strong effect. Now, we do several checks using these uh, institutional variables. For instance, we look at the short run, we look at the medium term, and then also in the long run. And in each case, we find that you know, political institutions are very important. Uh, we also explore alternative estimation strategies. We do other robustness checks by dropping outliers. Some might be concerned that if you include countries like Saudi Arabia in the sample, you might be accounting for these, uh, these outliers. So we drop these outliers. And we see, still see a fairly uh, consistent pattern, which is the fact that the quality of institutions, of political institutions, are important for improving uh, tax revenue outcomes. And indeed, we find out that beyond just electoral competitiveness or legislative competitiveness, we find that constraint on executive power uh, is more salient in this, in this relationship, whilst other complementary factors need not be ignored. And here, we see the role for uh, economic growth, broadening the base you know, um, of, of the economy, and then trade as other important uh, explanatory factors. This is also confirmed by other work done by um, Jepsen and uh, other colleagues actually participating in, in, in this conference. For instance, uh, Jepsen suggests that in the case of South Sun Africa, okay, <laughs> the, the lack of fiscal states in, in, in sub-Saharan Africa can to a large extent be explained by the absence of economic preconditions, right? Emphasizing the role of um, um, uh, the economy, you know, which basically represents the base of, of, of taxation. And along these factors, we also see the role of informality. So we find that countries where a large share of the economy is dom dominated by the agricultural sector, we see that they are constrained in terms of mobilizing and uh, non-resource uh, taxation. And so uh, and ag ag agriculture as a share of GDP also is sometimes used in the literature to represent, represent the level of informality. And that is, 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 is therefore an issue that um, um, developing countries or resource rich countries uh, need to give attention to. Uh, in, again, in today's keynote address, there were reflections on, for instance, um, improving um, uh, the use of digitalization or technology, for instance, um, in addressing concerns about informality. So in a nutshell, um, our work 
suggest that the quality of political institutions are important. Countries that are dependent on natural resources need not suffer a case in terms of the ability to mobilize taxes uh, from a, a more sustainable base. Uh, and that um, quality of institutions could play a, a mitigating role alongside other complementary uh, factors. I think I'll end here and we can have the discussion.